Hello everyone watching this video. Today in this video we will discuss the comparison between rotational motion and linear motion and we will see how rotational motion relates with linear motion. You know that in second and third and fourth chapter we have discussed the linear motion and in this chapter we are discussing the rotational motion in the rigid body dynamics. So here we will see the difference or comparison between linear motion and rotational motion and the rotational motion how the rotational motion relates with linear motion so for that we take uh, the first point which is the linear displacement or the displacement so in the linear motion we start with the displacement that is called linear displacement and the denoted by a small s so here in rotation motion like the linear motion we have the angular displacement and this angular displacement is denoted by theta so here in the linear motion we have linear displacement and in rotation motion we have the angular displacement now the second term in the linear motion we have the velocity which is called linear velocity and denoted by a small v same as in the rotation motion we have the angular velocity and which is denoted by omega which is denoted by omega so here the velocity we can write the formula velocity v equals to ds by dt and the omega will be so this is the velocity is rate of change of displacement with time and here this is rate of change of angular displacement with time so here we have the linear velocity in linear motion and angular velocity in the rotational motion and third point is linear oscillation which is denoted by small a and a is dv by dt the rate of change of velocity and in the rotation motion we have angular oscillation which is denoted by alpha and alpha bar is d omega by dt which is the rate of change of angular velocity so here the linear momentum we have the linear oscillation and in the rotation motion we have the angular uh, oscillation these three things we have discussed that almost similar in the rotation motion just uh, the linear change uh, got changed into angular so here the fourth point in the linear motion we have the mass or we say we have the inertia we have the mass and the inertia and in rotation motion we have the moment of inertia which is denoted by capital I which is denoted by capital I so here the in rotation motion the moment of inertia does the same job which which is done by the mass in the linear motion so here we come at the next point the fifth point the linear momentum so this is the linear momentum denoted by capital P and given by multiple of mass and velocity so this is the linear momentum which is P equals to M into V here in the rotation motion we have the angular momentum and which is denoted by j and the j is given as the p was given in the linear momentum p was the multiple of mass and velocity and here in the angular momentum we convert mass into moment of inertia and velocity into angular velocity so here m is converted into i and v is converted into omega that we discussed in two points and the next point the force the we have the force in linear momentum force is the rate of change of momentum which is given by mass into acceleration here we have the torque in the rotation motion and torque is also the rate of change of angular momentum so here mass is given by multiple of mass and acceleration and the torque is given by here in the torque in the mass becomes the angular moment of inertia and acceleration become acceleration become the angular acceleration so that's how the force is uh, changed into the torque and in this next point we have the work in linear motion which is x, uh, given by force multiple of force and displacement and in the rotation motion we have the same name the work has the same name in linear motion and rotation motion but the formula got changed here force converted into torque and displacement converted into theta so that's how the force uh, work done is given in the rotation motion by the multiple of torque and theta so torque is the moment of force and theta is the angular displacement so this is the force in rotation motion and this is the displacement in the momentum in the rotation motion so this is the similar but the terms got changed 
Now we come at the next point, which is eighth point, that is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy in the linear motion is given by half m v square. Half m v square that we all know about it. But in the rotation motion, the kinetic energy converted into rotational kinetic energy, which is represented by e r, which is represented by e r, and it is given as same as in the linear motion, mass will converted into moment of inertia and velocity converted into angular velocity. So e r will become half i omega square. So you just need to remember or memorize the linear motion and just you can get all the formulas, all the things in the rotation motion by the comparing the linear motion with rotation motion. So it's very easy and it's rotation motion just like the linear motion. So here we come at the next point, nine point equation of motion. So equation of motion, we have the three equation of motion, basic or all three equations are v equals to u plus at, s equals to ut plus half at square and v square equals to u square plus 2s. So all three equations we have in the linear motion but in rotation motion we also have the equation and all those equations will get converted into uh, the rotation motion from this these three equations. Here we have the velocity. This is the final velocity. This is the angular velocity. This is the acceleration and time. And in angular velocity, uh, sorry, in rotational motion, the velocity get converted into angular velocity. The initial velocity into initial angular velocity. Acceleration into angular acceleration and time re remains same in both of the cases. So here this equation is converted into this, this into this. Here the displacement converted into the angular displacement and the all those things are here here the velocity converted into angular velocity initial velocity into initial angular velocity acceleration into angular acceleration and displacement into angular displacement theta and now the last point we have the relation between kinetic energy and momentum that we all know that uh, kinetic energy and uh, momentum have relation and momentum is given equals to root 2me e is the kinetic energy or in the linear motion so here the p which is momentum is converted into rotating rotation motion is converted into angular momentum which is denoted by capital j here 2 is same mass is converted into moment of inertia and energy is converted into rotational energy so that's how we uh, explain the or we compare the linear motion with the rotation motion so Whenever you need the rotation motion, you just compare the rotation motion with linear motion and you will get, get all those formulas. So you just need to take care of the basic things, the linear displacement into angular displacement, linear velocity into angular velocity, linear acceleration into angular acceleration, mass into moment of inertia. And after that, all those things are similar like in the rotation motion, like in linear motion. So that's how we conclude this point and in this video, we will discuss one more thing, the law of conservation of angular momentum. So I just clean it first to write the definition. So here, our new topic is the law of law of conservation conservation of angular angular velocity angular momentum okay uh, we all know that torque is given by torque is given by dj by dt so torque is the rate of change of momentum or angular momentum so torque is equals to rate of change of angular momentum if if torque is zero then dj by dt become zero that means dj is zero that means change in change in uh, j is zero so here this is the law of angular momentum that if the torque or external torque is zero then the angular momentum of any body remain constant 
or angular momentum is conserved. So this is the law that uh, you can write it in the way that if external torque is zero, then then remain the angular momentum remain constant so this is the law that when the external torque is zero the angular momentum is remain constant so it is same as the the law of conservation of linear momentum in the linear momentum in the linear motion we know that force is given at as dp by dt if external force is zero then dp is zero so there is no change in the linear momentum when external force is zero so that's how in the linear motion is the linear motion rotation in the rotation motion when the torque is zero or external torque is zero then there is no change in the angular momentum so that's how we conclude the law of conservation of angular momentum and with it we complete this video and we'll discuss a few things in next videos uh, till that best of luck